And welcome to tonight's show. It is an honor to have my guests in the studio today. Um, I'm going to start this off with telling you why this show is so important to me. Because as I'm leaving the air airport, I'm seeing billboards everywhere that's talking about the Super Bowl. And after I see the billboards flash about the Super Bowl, I'm seeing a flash about human trafficking. The reason why this conversation tonight is so important is because Atlanta is one of the top cities in regards to human trafficking. So when you see that billboard, it flashes, but what we want to do is open up conversation and dialogue so that you will get an awareness regarding what human trafficking is, how it can possibly affect you, and how we can be proactive as far as our children in, in human trafficking. Um, our expert today is none other than Sean Smash Jet. She is a life coach. She is also an expert in human trafficking, and um, she rescues victims of human trafficking. So who else to come on and explain it to you and talk to you than, than someone that is out here saving our children? So I would like to welcome you to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It is my pleasure. And um, it's one of those things that you hate to have to talk about. Mm -hmm. And honestly, um, it's not anything that I wanted to um, even be privy to. I had no idea. Um, I do a bunch of things. I'm a motivational speaker, author, you name it. Um, was just working on some other things and had no clue. Like, I'm an accountant by trade. Mm -hmm. So this was not my field at all. Oh, I apologize. Um, and this was not my field at all. Matter of fact, let me do me a favor and so I can turn this down because I know my friends and family, as they see me live, they'll make, be making comments. Um, it's one of those things that I was in um, Kennesaw State mm -hmm. University mm -hmm. is where, how I found all of this out in the first place. Well, what, what happened? So Kennesaw State, I, I was pursuing, had my master's, pursuing my uh, doctorate in conflict management. And a young lady walked in four years ago, literally, walked in my class, in my psychology class. At this time, I was working on my psychology degree. She walked in the class, young girl. And another older woman with her from Wellspring living. And then there was another person from a place called Nightlight. And they, you know how in college they have these special guests. Mm -hmm. And my whole thing was, I'm going to class, I'm getting this PhD, and I'm going to be an ambassador for the world. I'm going to do some amazing things. This is my plan. I'm coming out of accounting. I hate accounting. And I no longer wanted to do that. I'm sitting in class, and these young girls came in and said, Atlanta is the number one city for sex trafficking. What? That's not possible. I've lived here over 26 years. I'm not from him. I'm originally from Detroit. But for me, being a person that was been here, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a transient uh, Grady babe. And therefore, I have been here long enough that I would know my city. And there's no way that these young girls are coming in telling me that there are girls who are being taken, who are being sexually abused, who are being trafficked right here in our city, and that we were the number one city for this. Mm -hmm. So I had a problem with that. And I literally said to myself, this can't be happening. That's, that couldn't be true. And so my main thing was, I was going to disprove this. I'm a researcher. I'm going to disprove there is no possibility that Atlanta, my, my beautiful city, is the number one city for sex trafficking. So I set out on a mission. And I started digging into the first two organizations that uh, she brought to me, which was Wellspring Living, Nightlight. Uh, and as I dug into those two individuals, I said, okay, if this possible, because now I'm running into survivors and I'm also running into victims. Because there were some girls that I, were, that I was meeting that didn't want to get out. You know, the pimp had, you know, and I try not to say the pimp, the predator, mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. uh, brainwashed them so much that they thought, you don't know what you're talking about, lady. I'm not being sex trafficked. This is not, you know, that's something that you find from off, overseas somewhere. That's not possible. 
And I literally said, well, let me dig into this. Let, let me find out what is the explanation of sex trafficking. And most people and most folks in our audience will think, well, we've heard a lot about this. It's a big buzzword that's going on right now. Lots of people in the city are running on political platforms and campaigns. Yes. And they're running on the, I'm going to do something about sex trafficking. Well, what are you doing about sex trafficking? And I'll share a little story later about our mayor, Ms. Uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, uh -huh. and her wonderful explanation to sex trafficking. But um, I, I set out on a mission to disprove her and wasn't able to disprove her. Mm -hmm. Well, I would like for first of all, because they changed the terminology from sex trafficking to human trafficking, mm -hmm. let's define what sex trafficking slash human trafficking is. And that's one of those things that it, it's a fine line because everybody's kind of been sticking their toes in it and there's been a lot um, going on politically. And I will say the reason they've done that is because as I start advocating, I advocate for three different organizations. Mm -hmm. And as I start advocating, I found out that there was a difference. There's a difference between human trafficking. There's a difference between sex trafficking. And my thing is, if some people say, well, you can only sex traffic a human. And then there's others who say, you can't, uh, only humans can be sex trafficked because you can't sex traffic an animal. And so... That's where all of this term. See, but that's how politicians play the game with the wording. With the wording, when they're trying to write laws. Yes. Because when I jumped into this field, here in Atlanta, a predator was only getting a slap on the wrist and a hundred dollar fine. But because we've made such strides, and I've been on the Capitol, not only here at our, at our Capitol here, but I've been to the U.S. Capitol. I've made friends and, and advocates and legislators up there that have really partnered with me um, via the National Coalition of, of Sexual Exploitation. I'm a part of that group. Um, so there's tons of folks who jumped on with me and, and said, okay, this is really happening. Show me this is happening. I'm going, uh, yeah, I'm out here in the streets. It's, it's really happening. And um, so some folks would say human trafficking is a part of folks who you see coming from places like across the border. Yes. Yeah across Mexico, across whatever this wall is that number 46 minus one um, is talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, so most people think that it is about some young girls, which we see on the TV, were brought in a van yeah. and they were brought across the border from Malaysia or anywhere other than America. And they're brought in here to do things like labor trafficking, which that is happening. Let's not, let's be clear, that's happening. There are still people who are bringing people here against their will and trafficking them here, but that's not sex trafficking. They're being brought for labor trafficking. And here, the girls that I am having to deal with are young ladies and young men. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's another part yes, it is. of it, mm -hmm. is young men as well are being manipulated, are being brainwashed, are being... Um, told that they're coming for a modeling career, are being told that they're going for a dance contest, are being told uh, or literally manipulated off the chats, off of the gaming systems. So there's so much of a conversation we can have on how this is happening. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. And you mentioned international. And when I was doing some research, it's the third largest international crime is human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Not only just for sex, but also for labor, mm -hmm. um, it profits $32 billion each year. And you know why that is? Most of our laws, not only in the state of Georgia, but mainly in Georgia, because I always preface it with Georgia, most of our laws, both in Georgia as well as the country, you get more prison time for drug trafficking than you do for sex trafficking or human trafficking. You get more time, you get 30 years for drugs, but for a girl or a woman or anyone else you've, you've had uh, bondaged up and manipulated, you don't get that much time because our legislators won't let that happen. The minimums were so minor that literally the 
predator mm -hmm. <laughs> would say, oh, oh, go ahead and lock me up. I'll be out in, few, in literally hours with a slap on the hand and a wrist and no jail time. And then picking up the next child. Picking up the next one. And, and also the reason that they're making so much money, because with a drug, and I tell the listeners this, with a drug, I'm going to give you this weed, this crack, this cocaine, this heroin. I'm going to purchase that one time. You're going to get your little hit, and, I, and I've sold it to you, and I can't get it back. But a young girl, I can get this one girl, this one child, and this one child I can sell her 20 to 30 times a night. And I'm getting a paycheck each time mm -hmm. from that one girl. I can use her over and over again. How much are they making? Oh, my God. They're making millions of dollars, millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. And you literally look at the statistics of uh, the minimal. And I, and I can give you stories upon stories upon stories of girls that I've rescued and talked to. And like, how did you get here? What happened? What did, where did this, and how much were they selling you for? And it has ranged anywhere from five to $10,000 for that one time, all the way to $100. For, I saw one report that said $30. Yeah. Yeah, because that may be something as simple as some oral sex. But $30 times 20 a night times one girl times two girls times I got these eight girls. If I'm a predator, I'm doing pretty good for not having to do anything. We're going to um, keep going with this conversation, but what I want to do is throw out the phone number so that you can call in. If you're watching us on YouTube on 108 Praise Radio TV, the number is at the bottom of your screen. It is 678-528-9482, 678-528-9482. And we are also live on our Facebook channel. So if you see me look over to my left, it is because I'm looking to see if your questions are coming up on our Facebook channel. And if it is, then we will answer your questions as well. But what we want to do is invite you to call in to dialogue with Ms. Sean, Ms. Sean Smash Jet regarding this because it's so much information. We would need a, a lot of time to get into <laughs> all of it. So we're going to actually try to hit the basics by asking you your questions. Um, so California is the number one state. Right now. Actually, mm -hmm. right now, not Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And their top three cities are San Francisco, San Diego, and Los Angeles. Angeles. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that is? And you know, there, the craziness is we've had, I've recently had a young girl here from uh, California um, that we were able to place and, and get uh, to go into the homes and get healthy. And she stated that she was taken in a van. Like she was literally outside of her college. And the gentleman told her, you wouldn't give us the time of the day. They had kind of saw her. She was doing lots of provocative things on Instagram. They'd hit her in the DM. She didn't say anything. And they had an order for her. A gentleman had asked for a particular look and a particular girl. And this particular um, girl wouldn't bite off of the things that they were trying to get. And this man was paying a lot of money. So they went and took her in a white van. Mm. So she was literally taken, which is not the norm, you know. Which, which means that you heard what she said, they were scouting for this young girl. Yes. Which means there is a look that they went out and literally are riding up and down the street. So when you see these news reports and, and these children are saying there was a, a person in a car riding by, parents don't take that lightly because that actually means someone in your neighborhood could be looking for your child or your child could fit the bill of exactly. someone. A certain look. And um, I have noticed uh, that of the girls that we've rescued and that we've brought back in, all of them don't look the same. There's no, there's no match that says, oh, my daughter with the long hair and her chest and this, that. It, it, there is no look for each person. Everybody has a different scenario. So it's not like, oh, that baby over there looks like the look, you know. Mm -hmm. It is every shape, color. There is no, there is no rhyme to, or reason to it. 600,000 to 800,000 across international borders each year. Wow. 
That is a large, large number. And 80% of human trafficking victims are women. Half of them are children. Take us into the mind of a sex, a human trafficking predator. Why? In my research, I found that there's two things happening that I wasn't aware of. One, did you know there was a pimp university? No, I did not. There is a, 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 an established area, like literally you and I can be in this area. There are people who call and they all know the different signs on the streets. First of all, what I have learned is most of the girls that we have come into contact with, we pick them up and they all have been tatted. So be aware, parents, of your child coming home with a special tattoo that she didn't have before, that may be someone's name, that may be someone's inscription. That's the first thing is that they tattoo most of their um, victims. And the other thing is they, want, they do that so that the person knows on the street that this is mine. So don't, you know, don't try to pick her up and put her in your harem of folks because they all kind of work in the same area. There's, there's no whole little jurisdiction. There is some um, from what, and, and this is I've gotten from commanders and, you know, I've been working a lot with the police and learning information from the GBI. I've made really good friends with them. And finding that information of how and, and also getting some reformed predators who've given us some of this data and said, we've had a primp university. We're teaching other men in school how to run this game. So these men come to this university mm -hmm. and they're actually learning how learning. to pimp, learning how to prey on girls, how to, got, how to get their and money boys. up and boys. And not only that, um, the mindset of a, it just drives me nuts because the mindset of a male, the details for running just the whole game of it all, the details for it, if they took that amount of effort and ran a real business, they would be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Because it takes a lot to run drugs. It takes a, a lot to run a drug business. It takes a lot to run a uh, sex trafficking or human trafficking um, business, an escort what are business. These, what are these guys telling these young women that are making them? We'll get into the children later. Okay. But I'm, I'm saying like the 14s, the 13s. What are they telling them that would make them even consider Okay, so there are probably about four different scenarios of how a f between, and the majority of the girls that I end up dealing with are between 12 and 14 years old. 12 and 15 is, that's that sweet spot. Um, but even the young girl who's 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, going off to college, that's a whole nother different animal because they're going out and getting hooked up by sugar babies and sweet daddies and all of that type thing. Um, but how, what they're being told is they're hanging out at the malls. They're, they're shopping at the mall and they stop by and they're like, hey, da -da 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 -da, I can buy you this. Do you like this bag? Look, at, I can take you over here to this store and shop for you. I can give you anything that you want. You would never have to do, you're so beautiful. And they start giving them the right girl whose self-esteem is probably a little low, who may possibly be bullied. They're giving the right girl, let me go buy you this purse. Let me get your nails fixed. I, I, and I watched them. I've seen them in the mall stepping up to a young lady and saying, let me take you out. And they start out with, let me take you out. Let me mm -hmm. take you for, for dinner. And a lot of that, that's, that's scenario one where they're coaching them on with materialistic things. Scenario two is I'm going to be your bae. I'm going to be your boo. I'm going to pretend to be your boo and then I'm going to flip you. So I'm going to act like I may even move into your area because I've seen you on Instagram. I know what school you go to because you live all the time. You've got your chest out. You're tooted up. You've got that perfect selfie going and I've watched you 
And so now I'm going to not only if I can't get into your school because I'm too old, I'm going to get a girl or another boy to get into your school. He's going to register. He's going to now become your bae. And then all of a sudden he will flip you. And what I mean by that is I'll give you scenario of a young girl who uh, self-esteem was really low. Uh-huh. And she really couldn't get any dates. And here she is, 16 years old. 16 years old, and I want to date somebody, but I can't. And here comes this young guy in school who's now somehow taking all of her classes because he's done his homework. Right. He now says, would you go out with me? Now we're going out. Now we're getting comfortable. And then all of a sudden, now he is taking on a new step. And he said, so now you've got me comfortable, and we're starting to have sex. Because this is my boo, right? This right. is my bae. Right. I'm 16. I love him now. Uh-huh. And then he says to you, baby, this thing was so good. It was so good. This is after a month or two. He didn't cog do you in. He then bought you everything. You've now getting some attention. And now we're having sex. And you're coming home to my house at, well, while my mother is at work. And literally, the scenario was just like, this is a true story. He came and he said, this is so good that I want to see if you'll let my boy hit it. What? I don't know a man alive who wants to share right. if right. that's your boo right. wants to share you. Well, that's how it started. Let me let let me let him hit it. Let me let and then it became another guy. He so he went back and told. And now would you let him do it too? If you love me, you said you love me. And then he'll say, "You know, I you, all, all that stuff I bought you, all that stuff I bought you. I now need some payback." Because I bought you these things. You wanted that purse, didn't you? You wanted your, your hair done. Well, my boy's going to pay me $20 if I let him hit you. So now this young girl is going to school every day. Yeah. But she's coming home from school, and now her boyfriend, she's sleeping with him, and now he has turned her on to three other guys after school. In enough time before her mother gets home at 6 o'clock. So now she has a new job. From four to six, she's got to do her boyfriend and three other men, three other boys in the school who are paying her boyfriend $20 to sleep with her. And yet she's going to school every day. She's being trafficked and had no idea that she was being trafficked until I came to her school. And I said, this is what it looks like. And she came up to me after my speech to the, to the school, and she said, because I, I end up doing a lot of speeches to the schools. I get, get out at every college I could possibly get into. And literally, my heart was broken because she's crying during my speech because she realizes that she's been sucked in Yes. from Snapchat. Now, mind you, Snapchat was even doing some crazy stuff a couple of months ago where they were trying to have an adult Snapchat that, but wasn't allowing any filters. But we jumped on that thing so quick and they shut it down. So what I want to tell people is you do have a voice. You can do something and you do have a voice. I'm nobody. I'm just somebody who said, this is really happening. I'm going to do something about it. You can go to do something.org and you can get facts. Um, as far as the sex trafficking goes, uh, you can also um, reach out to someone there as well that will um, answer your questions if you have any idea of you want to just be sure that your child is not involved in this. You can go to do something.org. What could, I don't understand, if she's coming home with all these things and her mother That's good. was there. That's good. What? How could her mother not know that she did not buy these things? Mm-hmm. Her daughter does not have a physical job. Her mm-hmm. only job is going to school. Mm-hmm. How do you not know? The mother had no clue. She had no clue that her daughter was being trafficked. She had no clue that her daughter was having men in her house every day. For months, the last four, for four months before we got in contact with her mother, for four months that little girl was bringing those men to her house and having sex with him because the 
boyfriend, supposed boyfriend, who wasn't her boyfriend. He was literally a predator. How do you how do you keep that from reoccurring again? With well, that's with with a, vic- a victim that you've rescued. Right now, that's the hard part. Is because now she's lived this life for four months. Not only that, she was a virgin. Oh my! So she, this is her first time. She's thinking. This is the first man who really likes me, who, who said he loved me because her parents hadn't said they loved him, her. So that was step one, is there was not a parent, a father in the house to say, I love you, or this, that, or the other, or, or really just showing any attention to her. Mm-hmm. So the very first person who said, I love you, she went with that. And the mother had no idea she had all these gifts. She had no, she was being very secretive about it. And we all know we've done it when we were coming up. We wrote stuff in our journals. Yeah. We snuck yeah. out. We went roller skating. Yeah. We did all kinds of stuff. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you. I'm, I'm guilty of it. I too. am so, like, my husband, I am a jet because my husband said he loved me and we were 13. And it, he was the first person to say that. And this could have easily been me because he is the first person to say, I love you and you're beautiful. And I was not beautiful. I had these chicken legs. I had these big glasses that were pop bottles. I was not the cutest thing and no one was searching for me. And furthermore, I had no chest. Everybody had a little wide hip. I had none of that. And so here comes the man who finally says, I love you. And I'm okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just like these young girls Just that are getting trapped into this like situation. these girls. Um, we're going to go into the children because I want to actually talk about how children are getting caught up in this as well, younger than the 14-year-olds, mm-hmm. so that we can kind of go into more so the, um, the signs of what to look for as parents and also how do we heal them once people mm-hmm. like yourself and the GBI have rescued these children. So we talk about the teenagers, mm-hmm. um, the younger children. Um, I've seen it in the grocery store plenty of times. The mom is scrolling through the, ba- the, the store aisles and her child is in the basket mm-hmm. and just on the phone to pacify them to be quiet or, or YouTube. And, you know, God knows what pops up on YouTube, on the commercials when what? your child is looking at it. Let's talk about the video games and all of that and how that plays a part in a predator having access to someone's child. Well, I think, first of all, and it is unfortunate it is, but this this smartphone thing is the devil. It is a devil that we've allowed in our home that we've handed our children for safety purposes, because even when my daughter was of that age, I was like, okay, when she turns 15 or 16, I want to know where she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give her a cell phone Mm -hmm. because this is going to let me know where she is and we're going to have this family thing. But this thing has come in our homes and it has allowed everyone else to have access to our child. Mm -hmm. Because not only do a lot of these apps that they're playing, the house party, the the monkey. Like, there's so many apps. Oh, Look, we see, see you over see, there. See. We have a, we have a teenager, <laughs> in the a studio, teenager in the studio. And as soon as she said so, house party, oh, yeah. her mouth just went. First of all, they do not want Miss Sean telling. You should see sometimes when I go to some of these schools and the parents have been invited and it's a round table and the parent is sitting next to the child, a lot of times I get... <laughs> Uh, students going <laughs> don't take she's gonna take my phone because this phone but is how the many, access but how many parents would do that you that, know you're you're giving them the signs yeah. and you're telling them but a, a lot of them is, I, are not listening I've to what parents. you're saying to say let me check your phone oh. or let me check and see what you're doing oh, I and t- then when their <laughs> child is gone they just yes. think oh she's fast and she ran away right as opposed to something could really be wrong and my child hasn't come home for a few days. Um, 
this is the thing. When I share some of the information with parents and I say this is how you keep your, your, your um, child safe and how I was able to keep my child safe and to make sure that she went off to college as a virgin because I literally knew what I did. Mm -hmm. I knew me and her daddy was together <laughs> at 13 and 14 years old together. And so, therefore, that wasn't happening on my watch. Right. And this phone had so much information, and so many people were hitting her up. She posts one little picture, and it would just be people all in her DM. Oh, you're beautiful. And they pretend to be photographers. Oh. There's so many people who, I'm a photographer. Mm -hmm. I'm a blogger. Mm -hmm. I'm a dance. I'm a model agency. Beware. Everybody that's hitting your child up as a model agency, as a photographer, I'm a blogger, I'm a film person. Mm -hmm. Like they're going for what they know these kids want. These kids want to be the next Cardi B. They want to be yeah. the next rapper or the next, the next Migos or Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for attention. And if anybody's on the Instagram that can see them and bring some light to them, oh, they're all for it. So you literally have to watch monitor. Mm -hmm. mo monitor your phone now first step that somebody out here is not gonna be happy about me saying is <laughs> when you pick up this phone if you you're the parent who says oh my child's not doing that my child oh, she is not uh, he is she he they own house party but they ain't doing none of, none of that stuff that y'all talking about that's not happening and then you go and pull the information that they've been texting and they've been sending and then not only that, the phone, they'll hand you the phone. Here, Ma, here's mm -hmm. my phone. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because there's an app on their phone that covers up the real apps that they have. Go ahead. I was waiting on you to say that. Go ahead and tell it. <laughs> Look at this one. Over Go here. ahead and tell Look it. Look at this one in the studio. She's like, what? Look at that, Mama. <laughs> When I first heard her say that, we was at a meeting at, um, at, at, with the GBI, and you said that. I was like, what? Honey, let me tell you, your kids are slick because there's parents like me who are like, give me the phone. It's my phone. I'll pay for this phone. You're going to let me see what's on the phone. And so parents think they're doing the right thing. Let me. I got her phone. I got her passcode. Yeah, but she has an app on there that when you open it, it goes, la da da, oh, there's nothing on here, just Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. There's nothing on here, nothing to see here. But there's a whole nother app that takes away everything that you can see on there. So you punch the Bible or you punch a calculator or you punch uh, some other foreign app that looks like it's something simple as a calculator or the Bible. So a mother would look at that and go, oh, that's just a camera. That's just a calculator. Oh, oh that's good. That's, there's no app here. But when you open that, cal that calendar or you open that Bible or you open that calendar and it says, voila, here's the opening to all my other apps that I have where I have downloaded booty shaking videos where I, she opened, she opened she know you're telling the truth. Where I have downloaded all this other stuff that mother doesn't even know I'm into. Mm -hmm. And now the pimp has access to me because the mom doesn't know that the pimp has access to me. And, and my daughter wasn't too happy with me. And I tell parents what I did was I used the parent chaperones. When my child was of certain age and, and I felt mm -hmm. like she was being a little lippy, a little more lippy than, than normal because she's getting some extra attention. And when I say lippy, she had a little more mouth than she had had in the past. Yeah. You know, she was a little, a little more sm feel, smelling herself. Mm -hmm. uh, but I started calling Verizon and saying, what can I do? How can I protect my child? What, how can I determine what's going in and out of her phone? And I was in for a shock, honestly, myself. I was in for a shock because I was that, oh, my, my Lexi's not doing that. She's a precious. She's a nerd. She's a, and when that thing came on and I started receiving what was really going on on that phone mm -hmm. from 9 p.m. to 1 in the morning. When you thought she was in when bed. When I thought sleep. she was in bed. And she's, oh, I'm, good. I'm so tired. I'm so Sleepy. And yet the phone is telling me that she's texting in and out. Yeah. I'm getting the text 
both what she's sending out and I'm getting the text what's being sent to her and I am about to lose my mind. Not only that, Verizon was able to track the phone for me. So not only am I seeing her texts in and out, but I also was seeing the pictures that she was taking in the bathroom in her bra and panties and sexting those out. So these are the things that we think we're sending to our little friend. And he's then taking that picture and now it's on somebody's site for sex trafficking. For sex trafficking. And they have all your information. Yeah. How to yeah. get in contact with your daughter, the phone and everything. The whole, they know what she looks like and everything. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I had a tracker that told me down to the letter where she was. So if she was at Chick-fil-A across the street at the school, I could see when she left. I had that thing set up. If she went from the cafeteria to the gym, I could see Lex went from the cafeteria and she would say, oh, mom, I'm in the gym. And I'd be saying to myself, no, you're not. You're in the cafeteria. But okay. But I did not let her know. Right. That Now, that's the thing, parents. Don't let them know. You got just as slick as they being with us. Now, you got to be a little slicker. So I did not let her know that I had this tracker on her until I dropped her off at the University of Alabama, Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> well, those were a couple of pointers. The trafficking, um, being able to call your carrier to see if there's anything you can do to capture their... Uh, messages and um, mm -hmm. also um, the app thing. And then, and then really without all of that, just talk to them. What I will tell parents, the first thing you want to do is talk to them. Now I'm not saying be their friend or try to be their friend or try to be their best friend. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying make conversation where they will share with you and they won't get their information from little boy over here right. who said they love them. They won't get their information from Sally Sue over here who said, girl, if you just do this and if you just put this on and just put this on, you won't get caught. If you just do this and if you go get him, you talk to them about what they're feeling and be open enough to share what you did. Because they're not going to share with you 100% if they feel like, oh, my mother is praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She just goes to church every since. She got my daddy from, you know, just she met him through Uncle Sammy. She's not going to tell you anything. Yeah. But if you tell her, listen, baby, me and your daddy did this. Or me and my boyfriend did this. Mm -hmm. And I got caught doing this. this. Now she's going she's gonna to talk to you. And you just have to talk to them without Ooh. nagging. And even though I was finding this information out about my daughter, I literally was using it against her. Right, you're storing it. You're storing I, I, it so I, I that took you know that what to look for. Yeah, so as, she, as I saw her text in, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak out and I'm going to the mall right after mama goes to bed. I'm going, we're going to do this, this, this. So when I found out that's where she's trying to go at 9 o'clock on a Saturday, and she didn't tell me she's going over here to mm -hmm. so-and-so's house, mm -hmm. now I'm going to get my sister, uh, will you come get Lex? And take her to the mall. So now I've introvert, broke down her little whatever she her was planning plans. on doing mm -hmm. on Saturday. So use that to your benefit. Let's talk about the video games. All right. Let's get into the video games because there are a lot of children that are, are elementary school age that are playing these adult video games. I've seen it myself and my mm -hmm. own family. Let's talk about the video games and how predators are getting to your children through the video games. The video games are my enemy right now. The number one video game the is... The number one video game is Fortnite. And the video games are my heartache right now because you're allowed to talk to... And, and it, we thought it was cute when these games came in and we were able to interact with them and we were able to dance and we were able to put our hand up there and get our fingerprint and they could see us. And we thought all of this was wonderful. So we brought these eagle eyes into our home, mm -hmm. and then they put these headphones on, and they said, you go on the Internet. My child can f have my email address. He can sign up online, and now he can talk to people. Oh, that's awesome. Now I don't have to babysit my child because he's by himself. Now I, there's 12 other people who are on the screen who can talk to him and give him some entertainment. Right. And I don't have to interact with my child because I'm busy over here doing stuff. Right. And I don't have time to play Monopoly and Scrabble with him. I'm going to let him just play his little Fortnite. With his friends. With his friends, to which you think is little Johnny around the corner, 
but you don't know his friends. You see that on this gaming system, he's playing with five of the master so-and-so, and all of them have secret codings and secret names. And you find out, you think that he has just made this friend, but you don't know who the friend is. It's not a neighbor. It's not anybody that's in your phone book. It's just a random person on the internet. So this random person will then befriend your child, talk to them, tell them they're the same age. Oh, you're nine? Oh, you're 10? I'm then 10. I go, what school do you go to? Oh, I go to Dream Academy. You go to Dream Academy? Well, I go to so-and-so Academy in Sunrise, uh, Philadelphia somewhere, when he's really around the corner. Oh, what do you like to do? Oh, I like to do, oh, you like, you wear green? I like to wear green. And for two or three months, they groom your child by getting all of their information. Oh, my daddy's about to come home. Oh, my daddy don't come home to four. Oh, your daddy don't come home to four? Oh, what time does your mama come home? And when you know it, they have slipped in and found out everything about you. They know your name. They know your mama's name. They know your daddy's name. They know what school you go to. And then they show up after school. Or they show up at your bus stop. Because now you told them what school you came from. That all they have to do is put the address in. They, they know where you live from the game. And... Furthermore, they can figure it out. Oh, my child, that child's on this route. Oh, I'm a child. I'm, now I'm going to show up at your bus stop or I'm going to show up on your playground. And I'm going to say, oh, remember me? We're going to play a game. I, I'm meeting you. Your mama said I could come get you from school. And that actually happened. It actually happened. So that's A nine-year-old boy that yes. I was able to uh, rescue, that happened to him mm -hmm. from his gaming system. For three to four months, they groomed him and told him, uh, all, he told them all the stuff he needed to tell them. And this man showed up at his school, picked him up, said they were going to go play the game and that the parent had said it was okay. And that young boy hmm. was made to sleep with men for four months. And I get so upset by it every time I think about it because I cried all the way home. Because something as simple as a gaming system. And we've begged the National Coalition for Sexual Exploitation. We've begged for PlayStation and Xbox to put in some other measures to take care of our kids. We've begged them. Mm -hmm. Because a nine-year-old doesn't know what a predator looks like who's on the internet. He doesn't know he's going to show up at his school. He doesn't know what is going to happen to a young girl who's, who he's going to show up. Because girls play the games too. And that little boy will be scarred for the rest of his life. He is done. While that predator will get less time. We're going to take a quick, quick break, and we'll be right back, and we're going to tell you what you can do to protect your children. We'll be right back. Sorry. I just, I think about that little boy. Hey!
Welcome back, you guys. Once again, we are here with Ms. Sean Smash Jet. And you can actually go to her website if you have any questions. If you have not gotten a chance to um, check us out on our YouTube channel, 108 Praise Radio. You can also see this on 108 Praise Radio as soon as we're off the air. And please share this. Go to 108 Praise Radio and share, share, share. Because if there's someone that has children in their home that are um, college, school age, they just need to know this information. And this is so important, especially right now. And if you live in the Atlanta area, Super Bowl time, we're going to have millions of people come to our city. And you do not know who they are, if they're, as she said, they're out here scouting for what could look like um, the next victim that's been ordered. You, don't, you just have no idea. So this conversation is very important. It needs, to, it needs to happen more often. And it needs to happen on a larger scale platform instead of just a five minute or 10 minute radio interview. It needs to happen where, like you said, the GBI is coming in and they're telling you that they're getting how many calls a day? Oh, my God. We get so, um, so many calls. Like if I turn this thing on right now, I promise you, and um, I've had the privilege to work for and work with um, Wellspring Living, Street Grace, and Out of Darkness. All three of those entities are my lifeline. They, they pretty much um, help me to, to do what I do. But I also am, you know, helping others who also have small homes that we can set girls in. But they all do different things. And one of the greatest things that I love that Street Grace did was they used to set up uh, different avenues where we could go and sit and, and talk to um, men who were calling in and getting those men to say, as they were calling in to order a girl, we'd set up different ads for them. Mm -hmm. And then we'd talk to them and say, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. To try to intercept some of the calls. But we couldn't answer the phones fast enough. Mm -hmm for the amount of men in our city who were calling. And when I say ordered, they literally have a book with a girl's picture and they put that in front and the men pick from that. So the Super Bowl coming, everybody's on that motto right now. It is Human uh, Sex Trafficking Awareness Month. Yes. So we're really getting the, the word out. But also, even though Super Bowl is coming, what are you gonna do when it's over? They're gonna come in here we're going yes. to do everything in our power to, to make them unwelcome. I've been to the last uh, two Super Bowls um, and helped them with um, some practices to, to get some people out. And we've, had, we've been able to rescue during those Super Bowls. I don't want us to be the largest one that they've ever had to, had to intercept. I want us to do something now. You see something, say, say something. something. As parents, as community, when we were coming up, Aunt Mary and the lady around the street was watching us as we walked home and said something. If we had on something that was too short, we called our parent. If they didn't see what we had on, we left. If you see something that looks a little odd, a man who is a little older or a lot older than a young girl who appears to not be, you know, maybe they're smooching on her and they don't look like it should be. Say something, even not if you're just a wrong. Man. Let me say that. Not oh, just true. a man. That's true. Because right now, especially in the schools, yeah. they're using other young girls. Absolutely. To bring in other other girls as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So it's not just a man. It, it, it could be, you could say, well, you know what? My daughter, and, yeah. and this is not anything to the LGBT community at all, but a young girl can say, oh, well, I just, I'm experimenting. She's my girlfriend. Right. And she's never been there before. You have to pay attention to Absolutely. every little sign because these other girls are recruiting now as well. Absolutely. Um, some signs real quick. Um, one, if your daughter is just completely done a flip on you, went from I'm not talking to you, I mean, to, to oh, mommy, I love you too, now I'm not talking to you, to I am, you're seeing her all of a sudden wear makeup or she's dressing up a little more or she's gone 
uh, now has a new friend that you don't know who it is. She's hanging out at that person's house. She now has a different bag or some different clothing that you didn't know she had. Check in her area. You know, you find that she now has a different phone because what they do is they give them a different phone so that you can't track their phone. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many ways that you can pay attention to, um, even with the boys. If they're talking to somebody, they're all of a sudden so into a new friend that you don't know who they are. Uh, any of that really matters. Um, oh, Jesus. I just completely um, started thinking about not only the buying, but if your child is all of a sudden saying they're going to be a model and, and you don't know this agency or it's somebody who's talking to them on their DM and it's just really, you know, getting intricate with them. Check those things out. Check the phone to see what is happening with the phone. If they're all of a sudden going some other places that you don't know and they're disappearing and they're, they've got, start talking to them. Start getting a counselor involved. Start getting a pastor involved. Get whoever you need to get to, to talk to them and tell. And then you start telling them that you love them. Most of the girls who we talk to say, I did this because I was not getting any love at home. No one was at home was telling me they love me because everybody's so busy working or whatnot. Um, but if you see anything strange, if you see people out and about that don't look like they belong together, say something. Um, and we, oftentimes we go in our homes yeah. and we don't pay attention to what's going on in our neighborhood. If it looks strange and feels strange, mm -hmm. you might want to pay attention. And I will share really quickly. It'll take me one minute to, to uh, tell the story. Something as simple as me being in the nail salon. I get my nails done. These are happen to be my nails. And literally... I'm looking at a man who walked in. First of all, men don't walk into the nail salon for the most part, unless they're getting their toes done themselves. But this man comes in. He orders her color. She didn't pick her own color. She didn't have a cell phone. So that's a key. You see somebody, she don't even have a cell phone. She didn't have a cell phone. He picked her color. And we're sitting there. And literally, I was able to get this child to tell me what her phone number was. I... I I, I, you know, leaned over and said, are you all right? She told me no. And I immediately got involved by trying to get her phone number and called her parents. She's been missing for two years and she was dialed up. I mean, dialed up, slayed to the gods at 11 o'clock in the morning on a school day. So that looked odd to me, but it ended up being she'd been missing for two years. And I was able to get her rescued right there from me getting my nails done. So it's simple things that you guys probably saw that something that made didn't make sense. And, and she got a rescue because you asked her. Are you all right? Are you okay? Something so simple. Are you okay? Three words. And she slid you something, right? Yep. And that saved that, that girl's life. Right. So you guys, you don't have to be superwoman or any of that. There's numbers out here for you to call. You can go to my website. You can go to their website. There's numbers for you to call. If you see something, say something. I would much rather for you be wrong than for us to not be right. And some girl said, tells us, you know, there were so many people who could have, who could have intervened and nobody wanted to say anything. Tell, um, tell the viewers your website. SeanSmashJet.com. And you have two books? Uh, yes, I have two sex traffic books. One is for parent, a parent's guide to keep your child away from uh, being ha having a predator to get them. And then another one is just talking about the intric intricacies of sex trafficking, what it means, and just more information about it. And also Wealthy Divas. Well, you know, Wealthy Divas. <laughs> We're going to come back for that one, but I do want her to briefly mention that. Yes, I I am the owner and uh, founder of Wealthy Divas. I've been in business since 1999. So if you look up Wealthy Divas, we empower women. We teach you everything on, on it. And, uh, yeah, so I can't wait to come back and to share with you about that. But this is my heart, my passion. And uh, I was hoping that I would not reach my goal of the of the girls to be trafficked that that I would rescue to be trafficked this year, and I exceeded it. How many? So I'm not happy about that. How the, many? The GBI did tell me to stop saying the the, uh, the number. number, but oh, it's wow. over a, a couple of hundred. So if that's not an eye opener, watch your daughters, and um, we would like to um, thank you for tuning in to the show. 
um, make sure you go to the website, do something.org. Make sure if you uh, can go to Ms. Jet's website, um, Sean Smash Jet. This is a conversation that we hope to have, have again on a bigger scale. We thank you for tuning in to 108 Praise Radio. And uh, I thank you for tuning in to the Asir Show. And we will see you guys next Friday at 6 o'clock. And remember, go to our YouTube channel, 108 Praise Radio. Like, subscribe, and share. This is something that everyone needs to see. Thank you.